my friends welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris today we will talk about something that I've been teasing a lot in previous tutorials and this is meta tables so behind this scary name of meta tables there is a powerful feature which is actually a standard Lua feature but it can be used quite nicely in Solaris to even better separate code and define global behavior so basically the meta table of an object describes and specifies its type and with meta tables we can work directly on the type of an object instead of every individual instance uh, themselves so we can start by using the same examples in the previous as in the previous two tutorials um, which were we configured sensors to move the hero up or down one layer when this layer change property is set and we configured dynamic tiles to uh, say that they should be invisible when the property visible is set to false and so far we factorized the code as much as we could but we were still working on individual objects so what we did was that whenever the map changes we call some code for dynamic ties and some code for sensors and if we look at that code um, yeah we we search for all dynamic ties of the map and we detect the property and same id for sensors so it's quite quite good already because um, when we are in a specific map we no longer have to put any code about that on our map we only have code for things that are really local to this map like this cutscene sensor that is here um, but there are still some drawbacks about this approach the main one is that we are actually doing this when the map changes so we are assuming that objects are not created are never created dynamically by a script so this became become quite li becomes uh, limited when when for instance we are working with, with enemies perhaps we want to have custom properties on enemies that trigger something um, or we want to to define some new some specific features i don't know on, on our enemies like how do they react to to some uh, weapon and if we do that by initializing our enemies when the map starts well it will work only for enemies that are already in our map file here but not for enemies that are created dynamically and enemies have a tendency to be created dynamically especially when it comes to to bosses or to complex complex enemy scripts so yeah it's still quite fragile to do it in map in game map unchanged and the only reason that we we did it here is because we wanted to search for all dynamic ties and for all sensors in the second script but actually if we work directly on the type with meta tables we don't even have to search for our individual instances so how does it work um, we can start by sensor maybe sensor manager.lua so this is the same script the same code for sensors um, when the map starts we look for all entity entities of type sensors of type sensor and we assign the unactivated function that is defined above um, and we can actually avoid a lot of these thanks to meta tables um, how does it work i will rewrite the script entirely I, I keep the old version just to so you can see the difference so we first get the meta table of the type sensor we can call this sensor meta if we want and to get a meta table we can use sol.get.main.get uh, sorry sol.main.get meta table and here we tell the type that we want and get meta table will return the meta table of that type so a meta table is a shared object it will be it's a table it's a regular ta lua table but it will be shared by all 
objects of type sensor in the whole project. So there is a meta table for every type, even game, map, uh, sprites, surface, and also built-in um, Lua types like uh, file, a string. So meta tables are really the standard way to define a type in Lua. Okay, so this is a regular table that defines the type sensor. And you can you can even have fun and try it yourself. You can try to to print the whole content of sensor meta, and you will find all uh, you will find all entity methods that are in, in the Solaris API for sensors. Um, anyway, we have now our sensor type, and we can define additional things on our type. If we, if we want to define the unactivated function. And when we define unactivated on the sensor type, instead of a particular sensor instance, it will mean that we define it for all sensors ever. Um, okay, and then we can just copy what we had here. So one particular sensor is activated, and so we don't have a variable called sensor, but we have self, which is the sensor instance. So if I do that, it should just work, and I can remove all the rest. So it's only like one, uh, only nine lines instead of I don't know twenty-two. Um, so how does it work? We define unactivated on the sensor type, which means all sensors ever will have it already defined by default, which doesn't prevent them from redefining it if they don't need the default one but a specific one like this guy here. Uh, it can still define its own unactivated, and this one has priority. The one from meta table is only uh, looked for when there is none defined on the object directly. So yeah, we can define functions, including events, either on objects directly, but also on meta tables. And when you define them on meta tables, it's like if you define them on all uh, objects of that type ever. And this self notation, I hope you are familiar with it now, but if not, Let's just remember that using the semicolon notation here is exactly equivalent to defining an unactivated field of type function with the first parameter called self. So self will be the sensor here, the sensor instance, and no longer the sensor type. Okay, undo, undo. If you want, you can do, you can call it sensor like this. So that it can still be called sensor here, it's, if it's more clear for you. And okay, and the nice thing, thing about this script, there is a couple of nice things. We no longer have to search for all entities of type sensors, because we are working directly on the type. So all sensors ever will have the activated feature. And the second nice thing is nice thing is that we no longer need to return anything for from our script, and the caller no longer has to call some function, some initialization function like we did. Um, we it, it just works more independently, so that makes it that makes it more easy to to share to other projects. Um, okay, so we used to require the script from there from Game Manager, and to call it from on game changed. Like I said, we no longer need to call it. We just need to require it, which means executing it uh, only once. Okay, let's test. I, I'm putting the code back, okay. Does it still work? Oops, no, <laughs> I made a small mistake. I forgot 
that there is a, I, oh yes, there is a variable called map here. Before I was in a function that has had the map as a parameter, but not here, which is fine. I can do sensor get map. I have the sensor, so I can get the map of the sensor, and from there I can get the hero. Okay, I'm I'm above the bridge, so it works. And now under the bridge, cool. Um, so more cleanup can be done. Mm, there is no longer really a reason to depend on our game manager here to call it from game manager. I mean, you can if you if you want. But um, again, I like that scripts are the more as more independent as possible, so that you can share them better between different projects and if you yeah so there is this script called features that lua uh, in most our of our projects and this is the place where usually we call this kind of uh independent scripts scripts that just have to be required to activate some feature and don't need to to be called uh anyway or to return anything so we are, we are we activate these three features the hud the dialog box and the sensor manager the fun part is that is that you can disable the hud if you want and the rest of the features will still work but that's not really the topic you organize your scripts as you want but um yeah just require from somewhere your sensor script okay back to game manager i no longer need to require it from game manager I only acquire it from features.lua. And since we have a lot of types in uh, Solaris, and if your pro project goes bigger, I like to have a folder called meta, where I put all these kinds of meta table scripts. So I will move sensor manager.lua to this meta folder. And maybe it can just be called sensor.lua, actually. Okay, so I have meet, oh, sorry, meta sensor.lua and to require it, let's require with the new name like this and does it still work after all this renaming? Yes, I haven't checked that my uh, cutscene sensor also works and is not affected by the, this meta table code. Okay, it works. I heard the treasure sound that is played here so again the unactivated the fields of the individual instances always have the priority compared to what is in the meta table cool um let's do the same for dynamic tiles um so dynamic tile manager i will also move it to this meta folder And similarly, it will no longer need to return anything. We just get the meta table, so dynamic tile meta of um, of the dynamic tile type. Dynamic tile. Okay, and then. When can we call the code that make that puts the that hides the tile if it has this visible property set to false? We can do that in the uncreated event of dynamic tiles. So function dynamic tile meter uncreated. So whenever any uh, dynamic tile is created. I mean, uh, even any entity is created, the uncreated event is called, if it exists. And by doing that, we define it on all dynamic tiles uh, ever, on the dynamic tile type. So we will just need these three lines, copy paste. And here, the variable type is actually the, the self parameter 
we can do it like that. And as you can see, again, we no longer need to look for all entities of type dynamic tiles or to do it only when the map starts. We do it more globally on the directly on the dynamic tile type. Um, oops, sorry, I forgot that I need to update the calling code also. I no longer need this initialization step. I no longer need dynamic tile manager from here, but only in features. So this thing of calling um, my script from another script called features.lua is, is just a detail. It's not really related to meta tables, but uh, I like to organize the code like this. And now this dynamic tile script is also independent. It directly uh, works when, you, when it is required. It does not uh, need to, to, to be called some, some other way. OK, cool. Um, I hope this is uh, understandable enough. Um, again, meta tables represent a, a type. And when you define something on them, it's like if you define the thing on all future instances, I mean, all instances of that type. And when an individual instance defines also the, the same field, it gets priority. And that's that is for today's example. Meta tables are really powerful and we can use them in, in, in a lot of situations. Uh, for instance, for enemies, as soon as you create uh, some custom weapons additionally to, to the built-in ones, um, you can use meta tables to, to define uh, uh, additional getters and setters, for instance, on your enemies. Uh, I will try to do a tutorial about that, but it, it's just the same pr principle. Um, same for separators, actually. There is a separator type, and you can define unactivated, unactivating events on your separators to uh, reset things when you switch from one room to another. For instance, you can reset your enemies or reset your uh, pots in dungeons. We, we do that in some of our games. Um, yeah, tons of examples, really. Um, I remember in previous tutorials that uh, multiple times I said, hey, uh, we can, could also do this using meta tables, but we haven't seen them yet. OK, now we have. <laughs> so I hope we will use them lo a lot in future tutorials. And more importantly, that you will use them and have fun with them. You can really do some, for, some powerful things um, and keep the code as independent uh, as possible. And that's really cool as soon as you want to, to share your code or, uh, yeah, between projects. I, uh, yeah, that's it for today. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye.